Okay, then let's let's start it. So my name is uh, Klaus Nilsson. I started Cognibotics about 10 years ago, together with some research colleagues from Lund University. So we are located in the very south of Sweden, in Lund, and we are now about 45 persons. So we are a deep tech company on a mission to create better, more useful robots for the many people. Because the society needs many robots. But we start in factory automation, because that's where we have the real and demanding performance needs and requirements on productivity and high-quality workplaces. So that's Cognibotics. And then we have our partner. Hello. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Wu. I'm the CEO of Aston Automation. So Aston Automation is a 30-year-old robotics and uh, automation company with our headquarters in China. Uh, last year, we sold about uh, 25,000 industrial robots. And uh, we're also currently expanding globally. <coughs> Welcome. OK. And there are many ways to instruct robots. As maybe you do manual guidance, you use gestures, etc. But it also means programming. And no matter how you instruct robots, there needs to be a textual language underneath. And there are over 200 robot languages in the world. They are old-fashioned. They have grown up from vendor-specific solutions, started with sequencing, adding flow control, and then, yeah, they do their work for that robot brand. But what the, uh, what the market needs today is a solution that brings different automation providers, technology providers together, such that the IT people can join the operational technology people in creating these better robot systems. Yeah, I fully agree. You know, during the, our growth history, we also increasingly experience the need for a better and a new robot programming languages. Uh, to us, a robot programming language is very important. You know, it directly interacts with the users, and it also tells users what a robot can do. Uh, also, in addition, you know, from uh, industrial or automation world, there are also many devices and uh, peripherals around the robot, which is right now controlled by uh, traditional PLC languages. So I think this should also be changed. In the, in the future, we would like to see a new robot language can control both the robot and also the peripheral devices. <coughs> so I think the need is there. It's very clear. The only question is, in which way can we innovate it? Yeah. So consider this event as the starting point for Julia, by means of Juliet, reaching out to both the community in robotics, but also at other areas like telecom systems, uh, other types of automation, etc. And um, the emphasis when we developed Juliet and Romeo as a technology uh, environment is coexistence. So that's why we are reaching out to other technology providers and interested partners to see how can we shape this technology to be more of a general usage. So together with us, we have here a, a Jesper Ekvist, who is a, one of the main implementers of our compiler solution, and Amina Goyak. Uh, so we will now run a video explaining some of the specifics in the solution and how it relates to Julia. And then a couple of minutes after that, uh, Jesper and Amina will maybe add some comments. And uh, if we have time for questions, we can do that. But otherwise, uh, let's, uh, let's run the video. We are here to present a new robot control environment with a new powerful language and runtime, Juliet and Romeo. The origin of Juliet and Romeo comes from several decades of research and industry experience from Cognibotics and Eston Automation. Eston Automation founders and Cognibotics founders had visions of enabling new technologies in industrial robotics before having met, and when they did meet in 2015, their ideas aligned 
for a new product. The first three years of the development was about finding requirements and possible technical solutions. Early on, Julia was favored as the language itself has most of the required features and more. However, some of the requirements, such as having real-time garbage collection, raised some uncertainties for using Julia as is. After investigating further, it was decided to make a new language as close to Julia as possible. The language should use static typing for predictability, bytecode as intermediate format to fulfill user needs for interactive motion programming, real-time garbage collection, and a Romeo runtime designed for consistent low latency and preemptive multitasking. The requirement to stay as close to Julia syntax as possible is important and is only broken if predictability would be compromised. An important feature for Juliet is to be able to save as Julia to then run in the Julia environment instead. Juliet and Romeo are targeting the real-time domain for controlling robots and other machines and Julia has powerful packages and libraries for digital twins and AI models, which is important in modern automation. This is Juliet. To the left, we have a Juliet program, and to the right, we have a robot simulation extension. The extension is showing an ER20 Eston robot. A motion kernel is feeding the simulation positional data. However, the positions will not be updated unless the motion kernel is being fed with new motion commands. These commands will be sent by the Juliet program. Juliet can be started either in run or debug mode. Stepping over the first function will initialize the connection between the program and the motion kernel. Stepping over the second function will initialize the connection between Juliet and the simulation. Now. Going inside Move Robot will show one of the few syntactic differences between Juliet and Julia, which is the var keyword. In Juliet, variables must be declared before being used. Since we are in debug mode, it is possible to set breakpoints. Running to this breakpoint will show that we have a program pointer as well as a motion pointer marked by this robot icon. In the simulation, we can manually set a trace. Adding another breakpoint and running to that point now looks like the robot is drawing something. It is not uncommon for a robot operator to wish to change the code in an already running program. For example, there seems to be a line missing to fill this path. In Juliet, you can add modifications to your program without losing the current state. This kind of editing in a stop state allows for more complicated code changes, such as adding new functions. Now, the tool center point color is changed and I would like to execute the motions backwards. This is possible in Juliet because the motion library has defined behavior for backwards execution of the moveJ function. This is entirely expressed in Juliet and that is possible due to Romeo runtime support. The last function in main will draw the three circles of the Julia logo. In this function, you can tell another difference from Julia which is that variables can be declared without being initialized. The circles will be drawn in an infinite loop by first moving the robot linearly to the top position of each circle, followed by drawing the outline of the circle before filling it with a helper function. Note that the linear movement moveL has a keyword argument on finish. This argument is a function which will be called whenever the motion finishes. The on finish function will be executed asynchronously. However, if I add a breakpoint to the last line inside the while loop, you may notice that the program pointer does not stop there immediately. This is because the last motion instruction inside fill circle will block the current task until the purple circle is done filling, due to the sync flag. The kind of language features that Julia provides is unheard of in the robot programming world. This is why Julia is such an inspiration to Juliet. For predictable runtime performance, we required static typing and the compiler should specialize as many function calls as possible. This is to avoid unpredictable dynamic dispatch at runtime. Note that type declarations are optional in Julia, but in Juliet type declarations are required in certain cases. In Juliet we also wanted static checking of variable declarations to remove avoidable runtime errors due to undefined or unassigned variables. 
Another important requirement was fast incremental compilation and code loading. These requirements all led us to create the Juliet compiler from the ground up to support static compilation and incremental code generation. The compiler supports type inference and the type system is very similar to Julia. The main difference is being that we require static types and all variables must be declared before used. Unlike Julia, we do not use LLVM and there is no runtime code generation. Everything is statically compiled. In a few cases, dynamic type checks are required in runtime code, but we try to limit this as much as possible. The Juliet compiler supports macros and has a REPL. The Juliet REPL is useful for exploring the language. Here we declare a variable and do some computations. Let's print the result. Let's write a simple for loop. The Juliet REPL has a command history you can navigate using the arrow keys. Here we declare a function that doubles the input. The Romeo virtual machine has a real-time garbage collector designed to minimize latency and jitter in high-priority tasks. The fundamental principle, semi-concurrent GC scheduling, is that the memory management is organized so that work done in line with application tasks is kept to a minimum. The most part of the GC work is scheduled with a lower priority than the timing-critical tasks. By using fine-grained incremental GC, a high-priority task can interrupt the GC with very low latency. The measurements shown are the lengths of such GC increments on a Linux machine with an Intel Core i5 CPU running at 2.5 GHz. This is the GC times for an entire run of a multi-threaded Juliet application. Zooming in, we see that the vast majority of increments are below 1 microsecond, 12% of increments took more than 2 microseconds, and the longest increment in this execution was 8.3 microseconds. This indicates that the worst case latency caused by the GC can be kept below 10 microseconds. That's all, folks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That was not quite all. Uh, we have a final few words. So we didn't show much of the meta programming. We do support macros, and it uses the same incremental, uh, the, the same uh, interpreter, uh, compile time interpreter that uh, REPL uses. Um, and uh, so it's very, very useful to have uh, Julia-like macros in our language. Yes, and we also didn't mention that the garbage collector has a dual heap and is uh, yeah, uh, concurrent real-time GC. And we didn't go into detail on the um, preemptive multitasking. So therefore, we invite you all to come to our booth on the third floor to discuss Juliet and Romeo further. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting presentation. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of time, maybe one quick question, if there's one. There's one here. Uh, do you have any techniques for uh, verifying uh, safe uh, state machine transitions at, or before the code runs? Well, first of all, the language as such is safe. So uh, now uh, undefined execution is permitted. But other than that, we have uh, a couple of projects ongoing or upcoming on state machines. So that's, uh, it's a topic to be worked on. And of course, we, we welcome the community input. And um, I think this is a perfect example also of where uh, packages and solutions will be the same for Juliet and Julia. So the two communities can really come together and be one. Thanks. Uh, I'm afraid in the interest of time we have to move on, but you can uh, feel free to check them out at their booth, right? They will be here throughout JuliaCon. So let's thank them again.